Introduction theme bit to my crap podcast troll. Yeah, probably will be shit. But by now, you should probably know. Jatak, Lulz. 27, number 27, Wizard 18 and 19, but before that, Hercules, the 2014 movie, uh, no, the other 2014 Hercules movie, the other, other 2014 Hercules movie, oh wait, no, it was the one before, sorry, yes, it's the one starring Dwayne, for some reason spelled with a U and not billed as The Rock, The Rock Johnson. See, I jotted some notes down when the movie came out for some reason, so here's my impressions of it. I am the young version of the old storyteller from 300. As ever, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be comic relief. Anyway, Hercules. He did some trials, fucked shit up, went home. Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Young old storyteller from 300, when did the Herc give you permission to speak? Ah, sorry, Herc, I was just introducing you to the audience. Shut your damn mouth, the Herc needs no introduction, for he who is I is, was, and forever shall be the most electrifying man in heroic folklore entertainment. Uh, yes, of course, but as a storyteller, I can bet. You can but know your role and take a glass of shut up juice. Now sit your ass down while the Herc flashes back to his tragic past. Diddly do, diddly do, diddly la da do. It's, it's the, past. the past. And, and a usual, usual day for the Herc, and that the Herc is being loved by all. all. But hold on, just, just a goddamn minute. minute. The Herc can, can feel something terribly wrong in his my very bones. bones. Now tell me, what do you think that could be, you present present day candy ass? I know you're just setting me up to say- It doesn't matter what you think! Cause what the Herc is feeling right now, which is to say back then, is that some goddamn role not knowing jabroni from the future is gonna piss him off! Which is why the Herc must finally, finally, go back to the future. Are you okay? Okay. It's a Smackdown Hotel. If you smell la 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 la, something to do with monkeys and asses. Blah. Wee, I'm John Hurt. I'm acting again. Oh no, I tripped on this corpse. Blah. Oh no, John Hurt. Tell me you're still. No, that's. No. I suppose that means I'm all alone now. Ah oh, well, I finally have time to read my books. Ah oh, wait, I'm illiterate. Ah oh, well. Blah. And that was the unexpectedly tragic film, Hercules. On with the show then, Wizard 18, The 18th Hell. We begin, as usual, at the antique store home of the mage called Wizard, wherein said mage is getting a massage from his slave man-child, Genie. Uh, Master, permission to speak? Ah, uh, ah, uh, fine. It's just that I don't really get it. Are you into this or not? Don't try to put labels on me. Of course not, Master. Even though, uh, not sure how that was- Hey, what's the deal with that cat guy who eats people? Asks Lucy, the mage called wizards underage slash undead, mistress slash worshipper, parentheses, it's complicated. <gasps> There's another cat burst? Oh, wait, you probably mean that guy who eats funky phantoms, huh? Oh, and they're ghosts, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't talking to you, bitch piss. So what you make of this lion lion clown, MC? Eh. <sighs> As long as we're both channeling aspects of his darkest and most unwhite skinned Lord Satan, he can do as he pleases. And that note, we go straight to Felis Fabricator, aka the mage called Lion Lion, who appears to have literally set up camp at an old fashioned shrine. Alternate Wizard Land Buddha's third chin! complains an old man who seems to be running the shrine. What do you think you're doing with that camp there, Sunny Jim? <sighs> what does it look like? Indignantly responds Felis Fabricator. I'm turning this baby into a shrine. Specifically one for his darkest and most unwhite skinned Lord Satan. But you can't do that! Huh? <sighs> I know my craftsmanship kinda sucks, but do you have to rub it in? N no, I mean, first of all, what does your tent have to do with- Well, if he conjure an aspect of Satan, he's gotta crash somewhere, right? <sighs> you gotta plan these things ahead sometimes, old timer. And on that note- Oh shit, really? Okay, we only just hit the introduction sequence for the first episode, which introduces us to Stinky Diver, a former Navy commando with an attitude as bad as his I feel I should explain this is an Action League Now reference. So yeah, he's a diver guy in full gear being overtly evil. And by overtly evil, I mean he's smiling. 
He hops out of the water where he was doing his evil smiling thing and into a restaurant where it just so happens our bee hero Felis Fabricator is sulking. <sighs> another stupid old monk kicked me out. Where am I supposed to live now? Everywhere else in the city's under construction. Oi, you there! Europeanly addresses Stinky Diver. Yeah, you, the conspicuous yellow scarf wearing painter who only seems to draw diagonal lines for some reason. You know my name? Asks a conspicuous yellow scarf wearing painter who only seems to draw diagonal lines for some reason. Which is, of course, a keys with a wasp to diddle for sure, for sure. On second thought, maybe I'll just call this one Scarfy. He continues to ask, What in my uncomfortably low hanging scarf are you then? Japanese CIA? Japanese the feds? To which Stinky Diver replies, What am I? God, you know, I never really thought about it. Hey, let me transform and see if you can tell me. So Stinky changes into his funky phantom form, a form I can only describe as a welded shut vagina with seaweed coming out of the back and a toothy, if completely phallic, salamander's head on the shoulder. S, 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 sawi jaderinus. Immediately identifies Scarfy. Well, that ain't quite the moniker I was looking for, but. Queen Mary's kablingy if it is not. Hey, who do you think you are having some random animal's head on your shoulder? Indignant asks Felis Fabricator. That's my thing. Why I oughta just eat your- <sighs> Where do you think pussy make me a cannibal? Crashing entrance noise. Oh, my walls. Everyone, Everyone can, can relax. relax. The mage called wizard has returned. Indeed, our mainer hero, the mage called Wizard, has returned to this location he's never been to save the, let's say, threatened day. You know that I'm not really here to stir trouble, right? I just wanted an autograph. Don't care, gonna exterminate your entire species. Cuts off the mage called Wizard. Afterward, both he and the mage called Lion Lion transform into their collectible toy forms and proceed to bicker while fighting. <sighs> Out of the way, let me at him. By which I mean let me eat him. That's it. Look, as a fellow channeler of dark powers untold, let me tell you, you do not want to eat a sowie jinder. Eat us away! Splash. Uh, he jumped back in the lake or whatever it is. To throw Vox eternal crotch. Can I get one just once without chasing the ugly target for a couple weeks? Huh? Ugly target? Well, yeah, the ones they tried to get to fall into despair. You eat those things and you don't know where they come from? That is just sick. Here, let me take a sec to get you up to speed. By way of unholy dance, MC Whistles gets the mage called Lion Lion up to speed on the whole funky phantom dealy. Oh. So if I get one of these ugly target cats, a cat ton of funky phantoms are gonna come gunning for him? No, 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 just one or two, and if you beat one, they call it off. Were you paying any attention to the final points of the dance? <laughs> Either way, they're basically still bait, right? That is just horrible. Judge interjects the detonadet, who just wandered into the scene, as she does. Those are human beings, you know. And if Whistles McDizzle here had the power to save them without using them as bait, then I'm sure you would- Totally wouldn't. Think nothing of muggles. You should know that by now. You what? Oh, right. Duh. I mean, you've psychonauted into me. I should know you even have the power to do that, but I've just been so distracted with avoiding my job lately that I don't know. A very awkward silence follows. Spoken by Felis Fabricator, who for some reason has decided to share his backstory. A long couple of months ago, intrepid explorer Felis Fabricator was defacing an ancient Buddha carving. But on the third whiz pass, as they were called, he, I, accidentally pressed the hidden switch on Buddha's temple. And wouldn't you know it, the whole darn kid and caboodle just fell apart on him. And so, falling deep within the statue mountain, which as it turns out was actually a temple, Felis Fabricator encountered a strange and I run a fashionable belt, which he I naturally had to try on. And it hasn't actually come off since. It shapes like a bitch. And in hindsight, I really wish I'd have taken off my other belt first. But you know, them's the breaks. So, as you might expect, after that, I somehow wound up with a talking ring on my paw. And since then, I've been driven to feed its insatiable hunger. Not the hunger of the ring itself, mind you. That'd be stupid. But rather, I refer to the ever-hungry spirit of the Dolphalcomy Lion Bull, who lives inside the ring. And that's pretty much all there is to know about me. 